Hello and welcome back to our final video for the basics of pixel art. So we went through how to set up Photoshop, we went through all the stylistic choices you can make, we went through how to actually draw it from sketch, outline, to color, and even to patterns. Now, here's our little sprite. Let's name it frame one. Alright, so how do we animate them? How do we move them? Well, it's quite simple. Take your layer that we just called frame one, and let's call it frame two. Hide frame one, and now let's get to work on frame two. The easiest way to animate is to use the marquee tool and move specific points to make it move. Now you could also individually draw out each frame again, but I wouldn't recommend it for beginners. So how does it work? Well, let's say that in this case our little robot here uses his arms as supports and he kind of just dangles up in the air. So let's select most of his body and remember with the marquee tool if you hold shift you can add more selections and if you hold alt you can actually remove some. Alt or option depending on Windows or Mac. Make the selection you want to do then go to the move tool and literally move it. Bam! Now he's one step further down. Do that to as many points of the character that you want. Depends how much you want him to move. Usually the rule of thumb is uh, the more the better. Let's make his little feet dangle as well. Let's have him look around. Now sometimes when you move specific spots that are in the inside it'll reveal some transparent pixels. There you'll just have to draw right behind it. There we go. Great, let's make another frame. Let's call that one frame 3. The general rule of thumb is if you want to make an idle animation is that you at least need three frames to make it look smooth so he doesn't jump around too much. Make sure to go back to other frames when you notice that you made a mistake somewhere. Alright, so we've got our three frames here. They should be enough to show what you can do with movement. Let's add some little bling bling to it though. So, frame one, his eyes, I want them to get lighter. Maybe he spots something in the background. And in frame 3, they get even lighter. He's a robot after all. Glowing eyes seem like the right thing to do. Okay, we've got our three frames. So what next? The most important part is you click on Window and you add Timeline. When you add the Timeline, it'll open up on the, the bottom here. If you click on a little arrow, you should have two options. Create Video Timeline or Create Frame Animation. In this case, video timeline has nothing to do with us. We want a frame animation. Click on it, and voila. So there we got our first frame. Now the way animation works in Photoshop is a little tricky at first, but you should get the hang of it rather quickly. Basically, you've got your timeline down here, separated in frames. If you want to make a new frame, you click on this little icon here, and you've got yourself a second one. And we have two frames, but they're exactly the same. This is where these eyes to hide and unhide layers come into play. On the first frame, we have our first layer active. On the second frame, we hide the first layer and we unhide the second. Now, we've got these two frames showing next to each other. Let's make a third one. Same concept to hide the second layer and unhide the third. And then let's make a fourth one where we go back and hide the third and unhide the second. Why? because if you want something to loop nicely it has to always ping back to where it was before that means we've got one two three two one because it goes back to the beginning one two three two one alright so now that's done At the bottom below you can change some settings you can change how long a thing is displayed in this case let's try 0 0.1 seconds for each frame 
below you see there's something called once change that to forever that means it will loop forever not just once and let's give it a shot let's play it there he is moving and dangling all around so what other settings do we have well down here you can use things like tween reverse frames optimize animation these are all to help you animate tween is primarily if you want to move an object from one location to the other but you don't want to create each frame it'll do that for you for now however you don't need this information we've got our basic animation and all is well in the world I want to note however that if you want to go back to make changes unfortunately you'll have to delete the three frames by selecting them with shift and clicking here and then work back on the first frame why Photoshop gets a little loopy when you edit while you, once you've already set up the frames. So I recommend only setting up the frames for the final animation once you believe you're done. Alright, so we've got our animation. What now? Well, the next thing I want to show you is how to save the GIF. That one is rather simple once you know the trick. It's not under save or save as, it's save for web. It'll bring up this window and it'll actually show how big that pixel art piece is. Tiny, of course. So let's already resize that, let's say 400%. Ah, see how it is blurry, however? We don't want that. Why was that? Exactly. Not by linear resizing, we need nearest neighbor. This applies to everything in Photoshop when it comes to pixel art. In the preset, we want to change to GIF. GIF 128 dithered should be absolutely fine. Activate transparency if you don't want to have a back white background behind it and then let's play it to see if it works it still works just as fine let's save it now it should have saved the gif for you and let's open it up in a browser there he is ready to be uploaded and shared with all your friends alternatively if you're making a game you'll just have to save out each frame individually and then use those frames in the actual game, whatever tool you use. I hope this tutorial, these last three videos, were useful to you. These are the very fundamental basics of pixel art. Join me next time in the next class where I'm going to show you some more professional, more difficult methods of pixel art to create things like sword and sorcery.